uh, I hope that you all have gone through the form and I will just uh, mark and explain a uh, very uh, the short mandatory training and uh, things which are very specific to the standing wheelchair and the remaining everything is very similar to a regular wheelchair and uh, this group I think is well experienced in user training and fitting so I'll not be demonstrating all that due to uh, interest of time uh, you're short of time can you all open the uh, user training form and uh, so there we uh, have three we have split this into three parts uh, one is the short mandatory and next is medium important and third will be complete optional it means uh, short means a very short training and uh, mandatory means it should definitely be done because it's related to standing function next section is medium important medium means it's a moderate wheelchair skill training uh, basic to moderate or it can apply to regular wheelchairs as well and it's important it's important that we do it provided if time is there if the person is already well trained then we can skip it and uh, that's a complete optional that means a complete wheelchair training like all the navigation skills or crossing obstacles and crossing potholes and all the stuff is there and it's optional uh, it's up to what is more important is what the whatever things are very specific to this wheelchair or the specific to the standing function is given in short mandate so we'll go through those in detail so i would request <coughs> the team from mobility india to again uh, turn on the camera so i'll only go to selected components selective components here so can you show the footrest of the wheelchair okay so if we can turn a little bit diagonally towards the camera there are ankle straps we can show that to the camera so a person must know how to put the ankle straps on and off it's using a, a dealing system just like regular sandals the person must learn this if the person uh, is not able to do this by themselves then an assistant can be trained to do this so this is uh, the first important thing and uh, so <coughs> Next is the armrest can be flipped back. This is also very really common to regular wheelchairs. And uh, locking the locking and unlocking the knee block. So can I have the knee block on the wheelchair? So Mr. Karthik, you can hold the knee block in both your hands. So both the rods should be inserted at the same time on the socket, on the orange color socket. Yes. And after you insert it, must make sure that your adequate gap between knee and the knee block and then you press it down until you hear a click did you hear a click yes okay and you can see a, a kind of a circular uh, 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 yeah that the circular part over there that should come into contact with the orange portion yeah it should go down yes it should press it down yes that's great so that is putting the knee block on and uh, this is so when you put this the knee block is locked and when you remove this you can hold the uh, black bars the bent area and remove both at the same time it should come off with a moderate amount of force yeah so this is uh, <clears throat> training if somebody has a balance issue probably uh, they can take uh, help of some other person initially and they can gradually train get trained in this um, <clears throat> next is locking and unlocking the actuation lever just like how Manisha trained you initially so the knee uh, actuation lever has to be tilted front and then pushed to unlock so can you show that two or three times you can have to tilt it front and then push there are two movements which are involved over here yes. tilt it front and push now locking will be you have to pull it back tilt front and then pull it back again pull it back tilt it front and then pull it back again okay so after this is done it's better to ensure whether the to see whether the knee block is uh, sorry whether the standing mechanism is locked or not so what we can do is uh, can you place your hand on the front edge of the uh, front portion of the skirt guard and try to move it it's not able to move right and then it's locked properly okay this training should be given to the person yes yes so visually we can see from here 
but the user when they are sitting on the wheelchair they will not be able to bend and see so this is a good check of seeing whether it's locked or not yeah two things <clears throat> okay so next bit of training is identifying the correct standing posture so can you stand mr karthik so when the person stands we are mentioned about the posture right so the posture should be connected to a straight line and the person can look at a tall size mirror if they have one or they can ask someone else to have a look and tell or they can have someone else to take the video and uh, uh, see and uh, inspect that so the person standing should be aware of by some means that they are standing straight they should be aware of some other some means that they are standing straight so <clears throat> that's there and uh, sitting and standing uh, mr kartik had done it many times so while sitting you have to uh, pull and then shift your hands pull and shift your hands so this is not adjusted for the weight so it's falling down back so while standing first you have to actuate the handle lever push it up actually the handle uh, push it up hold and then push it up again so it has to be done in two or three stages first is unlocking and then coming up to say 30 degrees and then 45 degrees and then 80 degrees and then complete 90 can you sit and stand once mr karthik yeah no, not too fast you'll have to do it in two three settings so you'll have to uh, yeah so you'll have to push it once come to semi standing push it once more come to even more near to terminal standing and then complete terminal standing yes very slowly this has to be done very slowly okay yes yes correct so this is how a person should be newly uh, uh, oriented person should be trained to sit and stand so same thing sitting you have to catch hold of the push them no, sorry standing mechanism pull it back slightly and then move your hands friend pull it back slightly yes it will be preferable that if you both your hands move front at the same time yes and after terminal setting is achieved preferably if the person leans back while locking the wheelchair it would be good person leans slightly back and then actually uh, presses the lever tilts the lever then pulls the lock back yes can you lean slightly back mr karthik while locking the wheelchair just just throw a head back yeah yeah that will be preferable yeah. okay so perform this is perform sit to stand mm. <clears throat> So next is uh, identifying the correct speed of standing. So we saw both how to uh, sit to stand, perform sit to stand, and how to know the correct speed of standing. And uh, again, maintaining standing position for five minutes. That uh, that is to check whether the person has any hypertension or any discomfort. Ideally, it will be the checkout will be done for twenty minutes. So there itself we can get some uh, side of training. So this is. Uh, about the short mandate training, these are the stuff which are unique to this wheelchair and uh, should be done uh, uh, mandatorily. And we can score as 0, 1, 2 in both safety and performance. So if you stand, uh, come up to stand very well, like the speed is good and if the uh, ability to stand is good without any discomfort, this I will give it as 3, sorry, 2. And the safety also you don't feel very unsafe so you don't tend to fall front fall back fall left or you don't kind of panic so i think it's safe so i will give two for safety and a two for performance so based on this uh, clinical judgment we can give the score based on three points for zero one two so every activity has to be rated based on safety separately and performance separately and in the end you can calculate it all together and see a pre and post difference So in the medium important, it's just orientation about different parts and functions, uh, getting used to the wheelchair, pressure relief, uh, turning the wheelchair. All these are the medium important and the uh, complete optional. <laughs> All these are the usual training methods for which a person has to be trained on a regular wheelchair. All the same things will apply here. So the idea is 
we will need a lot of time to train the complete wheelchair skills. So I will peg it at uh, three to four weeks for training the complete wheelchair skills. Mm -hmm. Many people may not have that amount of time or they will not come to a rehabilitation center to get that training. So what is mandatory is the first section. Uh, the short mm -hmm. mandatory training should be given to every person who is using this wheelchair. The medium important or the complete optional can be given if the person has a need and if the person is willing to come to the rehab center for training. It will be good to get the complete training uh, in person or remotely. I think we can close the uh, user training section with that. Thank you very much, Mr. Raju, Mr. Karthik, and uh, the other person from Mobility Media team. It was of great help uh, that uh, you were there available for this demonstration. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the last section, uh, what I thought of uh, discussing is <coughs> regarding follow-up and maintenance. So follow-up, uh, we'll have to do this for incremental fitting. Uh, so I, I mentioned somewhere in between that the fitting will not be a one-time fitting. It has to improve along with the person. The person should not get used to the wheelchair because the wheelchair is fixed up to a certain way. But the wheelchair should be keeping on changing according to the person's needs. Say the center of gravity, for example. Some things may not change, like the knee block length may not change, or the foot rest height may not change, but the center of gravity will change, back rest height will change, back rest angle will change, cushion will change, gas spring will change according to weight increase or decrease of the person. So follow-up is important for incremental fitting. And then following up, the person will aid us in uh, design improvement. So if uh, medical professionals follow person using RI for a very longitudinal duration, longitudinal uh, method and if we get all those data then it will be very helpful in small small design tweaks and maybe uh, different variants can come out of it based on the needs of the users and it will aid in uh, research research related to uh, lifestyle research related to standing osteoporosis bone maintenance many things that are preventing pressure ulcers tightness contracture deformities uh, we, we speak of many things but we don't have uh, uh, research which is done in India to do all this and that too with a standing wheelchair. So if we have good data available for research and uh, it, it will be a very good data point for persons in India and this will make the other standing wheelchair a very uh, effective and a safe and cost effective and safe way of uh, maintaining a healthy lifestyle. So and follow up is very important for tracking the lifestyle of the person. So what, what I will uh, say is the lifestyle is usually uh, I see it in three terms, uh, three aspects. So where there will be changes happening physiologically, there will be changes happening functionally, there will be changes happening in the life roles of the person. So it's like uh, top down so or bottom up will take. So if there's a change in the physiology of the person, say the contracture is less, or spasticity is less, or bone metal density is more, or the person feels happy because of standing, that will aid to functional improvement. So the person will be very energetic. They will be doing a lot of things independently. They can do occasional tasks like taking class in a wheelchair or uh, reaching up to a, a, a higher self and cooking with the wheelchair and all that stuff. And because of that, their life, life roles will become uh, very meaningful for them. We are, what we are looking at is meaningful change in the lifestyle of persons. And that will create a lot of health because when the life roles become meaningful, they're uh, psychological, social, uh, emotional aspect, everything will improve along with it. So we, we can see whether the person is satisfied uh, in the uh, life roles and in the function and in the physiology uh, based on the change or based on the positive change with the other standing wheelchair has brought into the life. So again, a good research will aid into knowing all this information. So that's why follow up is important. So Yes, that is what I wanted to share regarding follow-up and uh, I think for maintenance I have a few tips. So uh, every uh, partner here they have uh, different uh, ways of conducting maintenance. Uh, so it's more like more concerned about it. So it boils down to uh, four things. One is uh, knowing how to do preventive maintenance. Usually what I prefer will be a calendar system like the person should be taught uh, that the wheelchair should be wiped down every uh, third week 
they will just nut and bolt should be uh, tightened every uh, third month and the wheels should be lubricated every six months something like that so uh, phoenix will come up for that with the user manual and uh, troubleshooting so preventive maintenance is one thing which can be calendar based like based on time so every three weeks the person should know that this should be done just like what we do for the for two wheelers and four wheelers so uh, they also give a calendar system so every they do it based on kilometers so we cannot check, check kilometers in a wheelchair we can do it based on time Next is troubleshooting. So if something goes wrong, we can have a manual which will say this, check this, check this, or the customer support from Phoenix will help them with that. Uh, that is troubleshooting. And uh, then spares and service that, uh, so the whole maintenance part, I think Phoenix will uh, have it covered. You can always reach out to them. And But this is a very important aspect to uh, customer. So or, or the user who's going to use the standing wheelchair. So the wheelchair is not, it's not important that wheelchair should be fitted well, checked out well, user trained well, but also it should be maintained well to reap that benefit for a very long duration. Uh, so 15,000 rupees may not be good sum, uh, may not be a big sum for many of us, but for a lot of people who are not able to afford a good wheelchair, it's a big sum for them. So we'll have to teach them how to maintain it so that the uh, so 15,000 rupees may not be good sum, uh, may not be a big sum for many of us, but for a lot of people who are not able to afford a good wheelchair, it's a big sum for them. So we will have to teach them how to maintain it so that they, they reap the benefits for a very long time. And also safety is not compromised based on uh, improper maintenance. 